we're doing our part five to the how to mage run. Now this is the show where I'm just going to teach you how to basically make the most out of being a mage upon in Dark Souls 2. So, as always, show you my loadout. Not really focusing too much on vigor and endurance. That's not really needed too much, don't worry. Uh, focusing primarily on my attunement and my intelligence, as those two are going to give me the biggest advantages as a mage in this run. So I can run past him. I'm just going to shoot him because he's annoying. Now, his area doesn't really offer too much as a mage. Here and there you get some extra stuff. I don't know if there's nothing there. Oh, well, there's a liar. There you go. Liar head. Oh well. So, coming back here, let him drop. Ah, uh, yep, forget he's on a lower surface to me. Just get behind him and shoot him. Oh, nice. Got a couple of extra usual. Oh, God. That's not nice. So, being down here is not really any trouble. Although it can make this area marginally more difficult. Go away. So, just shoot you when you feel. No real point in conserving your ammo or anything like that. So, Bandit's knife is very useful for a bleed run, which I'm actually doing co-op at the moment. I'm doing started the recordings of that, that will be up. I don't know, sometime after this I suppose, but we will have to wait and see until then. So come up here, if that's how you fall down then that's fine. Just make sure you gun these guys down quickly because they can do problems. See? Problems. Shoot him. Heal. Broken thief sword, not really much. Shouldn't be any enemies up here, so just drop. Have yourself a nice little life gem for free. There you go, and there's a bit of tricksters there. So I'm just gonna, simply enough, just walk away. Oh, this guy's definitely in my way. Alright, so what we're aiming for here is that we're actually going to, to go and get the... Ooh, what's it called? I'm very bad with names today. I don't know why. Oh yeah, we're going to get the soul spear today. That's our next one. Oh, I'm using quite a few espices. Do I actually have any idea to trade in? I do not. I have not been collecting the espices. But... It doesn't really matter as a mage, because your whole stick is avoiding damage wherever possible. So the less damage you can avoid, the better it will be for your character. Alright. So congratulations, you've now successfully made it through to the second bonfire. Which, Anorta has the most useless shortcut of all time, probably. So the fact that there's a bonfire right here. No idea why that's there, but gonna replenish your spells because you're not fighting anything behind you anymore. Come back out. Yeah, you stay, keep your distance when you come around Naya, and he shouldn't normally attack you. Now, probably gonna be getting hit quite a few times doing this. Oh, so, gotta be careful. We're gonna hit one more bonfire before we go in anyway, so we'll be fine. Using up big spells should be okay. So just take your time through these areas. Remember, you're running a lot less HP than usual, so your key thing is to, of course, conserve it however you can. Boom. Get him out of the way. Now, some people would say that going to see um, Carillion of the Fold is actually a very good idea, which, granted, it is. 
obviously you should go and get as many spells as possible, especially if you've got the achievement slots for them. That's just bad. that's just good tactics. But I feel like getting the higher DPS stuff as soon as possible, so you know how far you've got to work, if at all. Oh, be careful for the archers because they are very annoying, actually. So are the trees, apparently. Uh, I'll just take the hit to knock him off the map. It's fine. Alright, this guy's just gonna keep running, so. Not really much I can do about him. Oh well. He'll die eventually. I can kill him eventually. Yep. Ah, uh, well, fuck that one, didn't I? Just keep taking him out. The last thing you want to be is ganked. After all, you are not somebody who wants to be ganked or have the health to survive gankings all too often. Also, another key thing when going for Carillion is that he will give you a very important thing, I find, which is the... Ooh. Oh, good. That's actually quite nice. No, sorry. He gives you the... Um, Blue Tearstone thing, which unless you're gonna just run through to the Shaded Wood, it's quite a, it's quite decent for an early game run. But I feel like our cast speed is already quick enough. Could always be quicker. So with these guys, just, just kind of roll through. His shield always goes up following his attacks, so sometimes you take cool shit little hits like that. But it's fine. You just pop him out. Soul Spear, right here. If you didn't see where I came through, I'll show you one more time. Let me just grab everything here. He also allows you to get access to the Sublime Bone Dust. Which is very late, good for later game. Now, depending on who you ask, you don't really need to continue on from here for the moment. But, I say, how to it. Let's just defeat the boss in this area, get them out of the way. After all, a gank boss is the last thing you want to have to fight later on in the game. So, just like my usual strategy, we're going to come across here. Oh yeah, this is the last bonfire, this is where we're going soon. Uh, don't really want to do the quest line for them either, because no real point doing it as a mage. Increases your critical chance. I'm not entirely sure if it works for mages the same. So until I know that for certain, it's no real point. Don't worry about you wasting a potential slot for your armor, which I am totally making use of. Alright, so that's my second Estus done. That guy's done for anyway. Yeah, as always, take your time. There's no real rush. Obviously, you don't want to run into too much confrontation straight away. That's just bad for you. Oh, so, merciless Rowana. Stun her back, grab the key. Now, you won't be able to sit at the bonfire until you kill her, obviously. But grabbing the key while she's still in your world is a good idea. Simply because it just stops the enemies from having a chance. Like, if she kills you here and now, you'll be fine. You'll have a bonfire to go straight back to in a minute. There you go. I ran out of solos. Great. So I'll just shoot her again with that. Got me the priestess gloves. You can actually get them from a uh, illusionary wall later on. I'll show you where they are when we get to them. Um, it's not from this way. No, this is where you take you to the iron key. I don't know why I'm thinking that. Quite slow, this is shaded wood way. Also, I'm continuing my research on. I hate that with a passion, but I'm currently still doing my research to do with the I'd love it if I could speak, but my research with poison, sorry. Why can I not speak? Just get off. Okay, see? Ganks do not want to be dealing with. So, simply enough, 
grab one of them. Ah! Oh. Eh. It's regrettable. Oh, now he falls. Eh. It's regrettable, but... Hey. As a mage, you don't get much health to begin with. But that's absolutely fine, because we've already got the undead locker key, which we wanted, and we've opened up most of the way. So, always pop an effigy, because why not? You see, I'm still holding on to all of the boss souls I've collected throughout the game. I'm not, I'm not even going to bother going for those souls. I'm also not using anything to increase my soul memory, just my health. As to all, you guys can mix and match different things, like... Silver serpent rings, and you can make use of boss rings and all that. Anything like that can help you. Tessadora robe is also a very good one. As a major, you might find it a bit harder to kill him, however. Just be wary of that. Right. Not really an issue, but you can just pop this up. I'm not even going to bother talking to him. But. You could choose so if you want to potentially use a weapon alongside your mage. Yep, poison urn over there, so we don't really want to deal with the curse urns. Get out of my way, skellies. Ooh, bit of risk. As I would always say, probably it's always best for you just to kill the enemies. I'm confident enough to run past them all though. Right, we're going straight for the boss fight. We've got full soul arrows and full great soul arrows. If I actually used my brain, I would have picked on the soul spears as well. But, it doesn't really matter. I have the uh, achievement slots for the next one. Anyway. Three of these big boys. You see, you're not doing that much damage. That's going to be the issue here. So, just take out one of these guys at a time. Now, a very useful thing, if you leave these guys for later, would be to try to get your hands on a soul great sword as early as possible. Because having a AoE style attack always increases your odds. Oh, you're still alive. Oops. I thought I killed him. That's fine. I don't mind killing these guys. I don't mind being a little spook. At all, it's not like he's the um, annoying spooks anyway. The little spooks, these are the armored spooks. So, if their shield's not up, they're gonna take two hits. That's okay. As always, as I say, keep your distance, keep your cool. Slow and steady will win the race here, as always. Like Eddie Boss. Oh, flipping hell. That's a pyromancy I didn't see often. Okay, so in any event, I'm gonna make this guy hit me, but I'm gonna use that then to heal. Oh, hello. Being cheeky now with your ow. Right, so that should be all the little guys done for now. So, I'll finish off this guy now. Ow. That's fine, because he's not going to... The pinwheels are going to be the most annoying... Major... Uh, majors? Most annoying hollows to bring out. Now this is going to bring out the most enemies... For one of these drops. But that's fine, again, it's two hits for them. They generally hold their shield up a lot less. That's fine. That's good enough. You just keep your distance. If one of them charges at you, you just move. Don't attack if they're going to charge you. Keep yourself open, keep your options open. And basically just manoeuvre like I am. In a clockwise circle around the boss fight room. There you go, let him do his own damage to his own troops. Don't bother me. Oh, hello. You're getting a bit close there, boy. -o. See, just continuously pulling back. Keep moving in a clockwise fashion. It'll be absolutely fine. As I said, for these little guys, an AoE style would be better for damage. 
Ooh. Running at me, eh? Fine, no. Pretty fair again, that's more of so I can take a couple of hits on that. And boop! Out! They're yeah, just doing chip damage, which is okay. Ow, ow. And do one. Alright. Really keep an eye on the flame dude because he will cause you the most problems. Also, I'm out of Estus and I did not realize. I'm not used to having this little Estus. That's fine. Just stay behind cover. Pop the last guy off. Alright, and now you've got a couple of extra souls to play with. Alright, so you just keep striking at him now, really. He's gonna keep throwing fireballs and that at you. But I'll take him just because. Oh, okay, nope, that time I'm not taking it. Right, remember, two pinwheels are going to spawn now. Once you kill this guy with the staff. And these guys will come at you fast and can deal a lot of damage very quickly. So my advice would be to straight away take them out before they've really spawned in. Using the heaviest arrow you can have. There you go. Just like that. That's those bosses done. 15k souls, straight in the bank. That's going to be useful for later on. So, as you realise, I'm still using a basic sorcery staff as well, so it's easy enough done. My intelligence is only at 31. Um, if I went for that soul, um, soul spear from earlier, you do need 40. You could probably get it a couple of extra popping souls. Which, if you guys are using extra soul stuff, like I mentioned earlier, you'll be golden. You'd easily get that level by now. Four bosses, you should easily be intelligence of 40. I did over level my attunement a bit, I feel. Well, let's get back anyway and let's spend our souls. Now, that's a really annoying one. They just don't, uh, have, it's okay for their ADP, so they're not the worst off, but you definitely don't want to be rolling around in that poison. That poison will do you over over time. Right, back in the jeweler. Good old Emerald Herald. And this time, I'm just going to dump all my points straight into intelligence. Didn't get that many. But that's fine. Right, so I'm going to make it all. I know I said that I wasn't going to use boss souls, but I will use boss souls because I to make up for the lack of any other soul that I've got. That's fine. See, it's not going to give you too bad. Doesn't exactly give you much of a boost. But over time, you pop more and they just add up really nicely. As an extra spare source. I like to keep one or two big souls ready to pop, just in case I want to level stuff up. There you go, so I'll talk to her again. And then I'll pump some more points into my intelligence. There you go. Over 40. Yep. So my soul memory is only at 131,000. At this point, you should be more than that on average. But look, there you go, two soul spears. One of two of the greatest souls in the game. Soul based weapons. It does take a little while to cast, but if you can build that distance between you and a boss, it will do quite a bit of damage. Right, so I'm going to end the video off here. Thank you all for watching. If you're interested in seeing more of this, I post these videos every couple of hours. Or, depending on how recording goes, every couple of days. 
I try to upload once a day to keep checking my channel for awesome new content. Anyway, thanks for watching. My name is Lewis. Peace out.